And I recently had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Lucio Blanco III via Zoom about the implications of Trump's projected return to the White House as president of the Philippine Association for Chinese Studies and a research fellow at the Asia-Pacific Pathways to Progress Foundation, Mr. Blanco offers valuable insights into what this political shift means for Philippine-U.S. relations and the broader Asia-Pacific region. Take a look. Yeah, so based on his uh, previous uh, track record as a uh, U.S. president, we expect, of course, that the uh, competition with China would uh, remain uh, a key part of U.S. foreign policy. And that means, of course, that would have implications for Asian countries including that of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I expect that uh, the alliance relations will continue to uh, be strengthened. And uh, of course, the uh, both sides will uh, revitalize the uh, consultations on how to uh, 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 strengthen uh, the posture of the Philippines in relation to the South China Sea flashpoint. Mm -hmm. I think that the U.S. Uh, might expect the Philippines to increase its uh, defense spending. Um, and uh, I think this is where uh, U.S. Uh, companies and, uh, of course, U.S. government can help support uh, the country's uh, defense modernization. Uh, it remains to be seen how uh, this would be implemented. And, uh, of course, um, many are expecting how uh, the new administration of Trump would be any different from the previous one. Based on Trump's first term, what can uh, Southeast Asian nations expect regarding U.S.-China trade tensions and their spillover effects? I think there's a serious concern on the part of uh, Asian countries in relation to the trade tensions between U.S. and China. I think the fear that uh, the uh, tariff uh, wars uh, between uh, U.S. and China, which are both important economic players uh, in the region, would result to the scuttling or the unsettling of integrated supply chains. There's concern that uh, there might be some fragmentation in the technology space. Mm. Uh, this may represent some opportunity, but I think short term, uh, in the sense that uh, some U.S. companies might accelerate the uh, move to uh, Southeast Asia to uh, expand uh, production, minimize their exposure in, in China. But uh, again, we would have to see uh, the kind of uh, incentives that the uh, Trump administration may uh, roll out in order to encourage uh, the move uh, by uh, some U.S. and uh, foreign companies. What economic implications should the Philippines and ASEAN prepare for under a second Trump presidency? Well, there is concern about the uh, trade war, the escalation of the trade uh, tariff uh, wars between U.S. and China, which are both important economic players for the region. Mm -hmm. And while there might be short-term gains in terms of uh, the Trump administration probably encouraging U.S. and other foreign companies to diminish or to reduce their exposure in mainland uh, China and move uh, some of their production or supply chains elsewhere, including in Southeast Asia. So there might be some opportunities for countries like the Philippines, uh, mm -hmm. Vietnam, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, and Indonesia. But mm -hmm. uh, again, in the uh, trade tensions between U.S. and China intensified, then there is that fear that supply chains that are fairly integrated would mm -hmm. be scuttled. And of course, that would lead to a knockdown effect on the cost. And uh, of course, the price of uh, commodities that are reliant on this um, enmeshed supply chains. Mm -hmm. So there might be some uh, opportunities to be made in terms of attracting uh, U.S. and uh, Western capital, especially in the technology space, to move into some ASEAN countries. But mm -hmm. uh, again, this might be fleeting. Uh, this may be short term. And um, if the trade... Uh, and the tariff wars between the two sides, especially in the technology sector, would uh, escalate, then expect um, difficulties for countries in the region that source inputs from both sides and also export you know, their end or products 
uh, mm-hmm. in either side. So there will be certainly uh, an effect all throughout the supply chain. Mm-hmm. Now, you're talking about trade policies of Trump. How will it affect uh, exports and investments in the Philippines? Well, I think that uh, some uh, Philippine companies may try to ride on uh, Trump uh, trade aggressive uh, trade policy vis-a-vis China in order to corner more U.S. capital, more U.S. companies that are moving out of uh, China and expanding into Southeast Asia, adopting China plus one or plus two or plus three, and then uh, try to offer some kind of incentives in order to attract this uh, outgoing capital. And uh, of course, uh, for this to happen, the Philippines needs uh, to improve its competitiveness because it's not the only uh, party that is uh, also trying to get this uh, in expanded share of U.S. capital moving into the region. So countries like Vietnam uh, will uh, expectedly be more aggressive in terms of trying to upgrade their value in the uh, supply chain by trying to get more of this uh, investments uh, going out of China because mm-hmm. of uh, Trump's policy mm-hmm. of uh, trying to diminish reliance on China for critical minerals and uh, also for um, intermediate goods. And of course, we would have to check whether U.S. corporates, Western corporates will follow the uh, policy guidance coming from the U.S. government. And I think that would be a strong signal uh, for the others uh, w- waiting as to whether the, the policy from the government would really have a strong uh, drive, would provide the kind of incentives in order to push uh, these uh, companies out of China, uh, but at the same time not uh, affecting much of their financial bottom line. So we would have to see because there's a lot of moving parts uh, in, in, in this kind of space. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, how could the election outcome influence, uh, let's, uh, the alliances, you mentioned alliances earlier, uh, how could the election outcome influence U.S.-led alliances in Asia like uh, the Quad, the ASEAN? Um, could you tell us more about that? Well, uh, we would have to see whether Trump would have the same intense uh, we would have to see whether Trump would have the same uh, commitment to minilaterals and whether he would uh, push for these uh, ad hoc configurations with the same vigor as the previous Biden administration. Mm-hmm. But uh, certainly this network of alliances and uh, ad hoc uh, groupings can provide the U.S. Um, means by which to compete with China uh, especially in the security sphere, uh, mm-hmm. as well as in the technology space. So we would have to uh, wait and see in the next coming uh, months whether uh, these uh, bilaterals will continue to play an important role in U.S. foreign policy under a Trump 2.0 presidency. How might this affect ongoing territorial disputes in the South China Sea? We would have have to see whether the Trump administration will also provide the same kind of diplomatic material support for the Philippines, including the country's uh, naval and coast guard modernization, and uh, whether the uh, minilateral uh, configurations, including U.S., Japan, Philippines, trilateral, and the squad, uh, will uh, provide uh, the same kind of uh, diplomatic as well as, uh, of course, military support by way of uh, transfer of uh, military equipment or arms, mm-hmm. as well as uh, joint patrols or joint sales, uh, joint exercises, uh, including in areas like the West Philippine Sea, uh, mm-hmm. because that has been a feature of uh, those are some of the actions taken by the uh, incumbent uh, Biden administration. So we would have to see whether the same uh, actions or behavior would be sustained by, by Trump uh, in order to demonstrate its support to its Southeast Asian allies. So 
we will have to uh, i think uh, see in the next coming uh, months uh, whether this would be the same uh, kind of template that um, uh, the second Trump administration would pursue in relation to its um, defense and security commitments to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate on specific uh, preparations the Philippines should make? I expect that the uh, first Marcos government would reach out to the new uh, to the incoming government uh, in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, try to uh, bolster relations and, uh, of course, uh, look at areas where Philippines and U.S. can uh, work together. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this would include, of course, uh, areas like the critical mineral supply chain. Uh, of course, uh, if U.S. would position itself uh, in terms of um, sustaining its advantages uh, in the technology space, it would be very important to have access to critical minerals. And the Philippines is, uh, of course, well endowed with uh, such valuable uh, mineral resources like nickel and cobalt. Thank you to Dr. Lucio Pitlo III for sharing his insights and analysis with us today. Despite some connection issues on Zoom, we appreciate his time and perspective. And the news continues here on At 25 World News. We'll be right back.